okay, I guess we better get serious because we're yeah, on, right? Yeah, get serious because right? you got Welcome. the number ring on. That's what he called. <laughs> See, you got too many inside jokes. That's, hey, a, that's a behind the scenes joke. It's the Marriage and Money Podcast. <laughs> yes, it Egypt. is. <laughs> Mike, let me just say that. Forget first the inside first. jokes. Make sure you subscribe, yes. tell your friends, and hit that notification. Hit notifications on so you know when we have another episode up. And I'm yeah. super excited about today's episode. But before mm-hmm. we get into who our guests are, uh, I wanted to talk about social media just for a minute here because for Mike and I, this has been this has been such a conversation mm-hmm. as of lately because like we have three girls. Yeah. You know, two of them are obviously of the age where social media is their thing. Their phone mm-hmm. is in their hand all the mm-hmm. time. And Kendall, our 11 year old, number one, is not allowed to be on TikTok. Mm-hmm. Period. If the owner, the creators of TikTok say they don't let their children on, why would our children be on? Mm-hmm. So that's and now of course our government is trying to determine if TikTok is even going to be permissible mm-hmm. in the U.S. Yeah. And I say good. I, I vote no TikTok. And you say mm. the opposite. Well, it's not that I say the opposite. What was going through my mind is there are a lot of people that truly rely on social platforms. Right? For money. This for is money, their income. For exposure, mm-hmm. you know, for branding, et cetera, et cetera. And when I started to hear the rumors going around that, hey, there's a contract going around that mm-hmm. the clock app is probably going to be banned from mm-hmm. the U.S., so instantly I said, wow, a lot of people are probably going to be on edge for that, mm-hmm. right? So this conversation brought that up and it brought up a lot of emotions and thoughts to, hey, how do you feel about it? What do you feel about mm-hmm. it? You know, what, what, what are your thoughts on social media? And what is your backup plan if for some reason you solely rely on content creation or content to, to, to drive your strange. avenue What's what else is there? What's next? But I, I think we should have multiple. We should learn from the rooter to the tutor. Like in school, we're teaching our kids all of these things. But what can they actually apply to their life? Mm-hmm. I've always said that, honey. Calculus, I have never done. <laughs> well, guess what? I, I, I had to do statistics <laughs> three times. I have never done that in right. my life. Instead, it would have been great. To learn how do you manage credit? What Mm -hmm. is credit? Why is it Mm -hmm. important? How do you buy a property so it doesn't feel like foreign language? It's not something you're learning later in life. We should be teaching things that really apply. But I I feel like, okay, Mm -hmm. because I know we argued about this one, about TikTok. Because you were like, no, social media, if they get rid of, he was like, if they get rid of it, it's like censorship. Mm -hmm. I hear that. But I also, it's not such a bad thing, babe. When we think about the good old days, which, by the way, were like five years ago, <laughs> which were like five, ten years ago. It was like the good old days where people still talked and we weren't sitting at the same table and having conversations with other people where our face was like in the phone. Mm-hmm. There's got to be a balance is all I'm oh, saying. No, definitely. Everything I just feel requires like a TikTok's balance. TikTok's toxic Everything to me. requires a balance. And I wasn't so set on that particular app. I was saying in general mm-hmm. to get rid of it all because of what somebody's opinion is censorship. But certain particular apps, if they're truly and allegedly taking information from certain states, yeah. by all means, get rid of it, for yeah. sure. But the guests we have well, they can might dig have, in on this they as might, well. They might have an opinion about this, but mm-hmm. they certainly have an opinion about multiple streams of oh, income. Oh, easily. They certainly have easily. opinions about, you know, marriage uh-huh. and how to make it work, and that's what this is all about, guys. Mm-hmm. So we want to bring them in. Wait, yes. she gave me a bell. I didn't give you the bell. KD done gave her that bell. bell. Hey, was this my Christmas gift, <laughs> by the way? He was like, each of always is like, ring a bell. Uh-huh. Now I got a bell. I know what I'm going to use this bell for at home, though. This is not that type of show, but it is that type of show. We married, guys. <laughs> Come upstairs. <laughs> so, so, guys. Okay, so I'm excited. All right. She is an actress and a prolific poet. Actually yes. broke the internet at yes. one point. Miss Ernestine Morrison. Uh-huh. And her husband is a powerhouse. He's called Mr. Real Estate. Oh. Okay, entrepreneur, author, mm-hmm. speaker as well. They're here, and um, we want to give them a huge welcome. Yes. Ernestine and Jay hey. Morrison. <laughs> yes. Yeah, <laughs> all this fabulous. Yo, oh my God! Look, they came and showed up. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having Does us. Does anything we say or just said made any sense? Uh, absolutely. Okay. Well, well, as far as the TikTok and the, the ban on TikTok and the the owners not wanting their kids, I know I have said it. I have made this very clear. So we have a two year old, uh-huh. and I'm like, look, Kobe is going to be real mad at me because we ain't doing all this new age stuff. Like, mm. I don't think they should have social media until 18, mm. 16 maybe. Wow, but like anything okay. below 16, I don't think you should be he on look, TikTok. He looks like he disagrees. <laughs> yeah. Jay, like, I don't know about that. I mean, I just feel like kids are going, you know, you're going to get access to it, right? Yeah. You want to make restrictions. I think it's really about just strong fundamental principles mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. parenting, right? Because like 
we know we, we all were kids, right? Yeah. We, we, we a little older now, but right. you know you're gonna break rules, you're gonna break laws, but mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you sneak out your house, you skip school, you skip I a never class. Snuck out you, of the house. <laughs> <laughs> I think about myself here. <laughs> but if you do things that are against your household rules, it's, at the end of the day, you gotta like just tramp a child the way they should go. So mm -hmm. when they when they're not with you mm -hmm. or at, on TikTok or doing whatever, right. they know that okay, this is pushing my mm -hmm. my moral compass. But don't you think it, it, clearly, because you guys are very popular on social media as well, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you've built a legacy for yourselves and the Legacy Center. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you do see that there's algorithms that control what we're consuming. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. it's not totally like, hey, let me go follow a channel that I love or let me go follow something educational. Mm -hmm. We're being fed things mm -hmm. strategically. To me, that's the danger. Yes. I think it is a danger. Yeah. It's manipulation. That's, that's why Kobe won't be on any of them until she's... I'm not going <laughs> to fight for her to be on it. <laughs> right, 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 right. No, nah, I'm just saying that my bigger defense, just because I, I intentionally made my daughter a Scorpio like me. So we wait a minute. Ah, you're Scorpio. Yes. You know, you, <gasps> wait. So you know the formula to how to make wait, another Scorpio. We literally. He said, "I want I'll our child to be a Scorpio like me." I was so trying we, to match my birthday. We do uh -huh. math. Sitting so, at a table with two Scorpios. Yes. Right there. Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> this is why. Right. So right. Only over there our baby is. Oh, I'm a Pisces. So I'm, okay. in, I'm so, in the water. So, pool. Okay. So it's a mix. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. so 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 I know she's gonna be a Scorpio. Uh huh. <laughs> so the, the strongest thing I can do, as opposed to tell her what not to do, right is to really prepare her on how to maneuver and the best way to be when she's in environments and in situations. Exactly. I, I accept. I receive that. Mm -hmm. Because you are right. Like, they're eventually going to, whatever we do with our kids, they're going to have to go out and face the world and navigate yeah. themselves. I get that. We can prolong it, though. No. Yes, thank you. you. Okay. You, but giving them the tools is the key. Because one of my things is, you know, with my older daughter being in college, I can't be there all the time. Mm -hmm. right. But I know if I instill the rightness in her, She's gonna do right by it. Yeah. Lies and fairy tales. Listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying. The reason why that. the reason why I say that because sometimes even when you're talking <laughs> to your kids, they may not be listening to you, or they're like, "Oh, here he go again." But when I watch them from afar, they do have. Or, or should I say they have? Sticks. Listen, it sticks. Yeah. But I'm saying you're both saying the right thing because you may not want to on there, mm -hmm. but there's computers in school. Oh yeah. The kids mm -hmm. sitting next to them got a smartphone, so they're gonna get on it no matter yeah. what. Is there an age difference yes. between? We're seven years apart. Se mm, that's okay. not really an age difference. No, really? that's not bad. Uh -huh. no, no, that's not like bad. Almost a decade. That is an age difference. It's close to. We watch whole different cartoons. Like, you know, the cartoons <laughs> yeah, that I I'm watch. Like, like, I'm like, oh, remember that cartoon? That's like, when it comes into like, play. No, I don't remember what? that. I'm like, oh, seven like, years. Seven like, y'all didn't do that? I'm like, no, nah, I didn't do yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Smurf generation. No. I was 80. She was 87. It was like a different. That is. See, when you go there, that's different. I was Rugrats, Nick at Night. Oh, my gosh. It's a whole Hey Arnold. It's a whole different genre. Yeah. Like, I was in the streets in 96. Like, I was outside. He was in the streets in 96. I was graduating. Elementary school. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, but, but it doesn't feel, you know, as you get older, seven years doesn't feel right. Yeah. like, right. you know, far apart. And I actually love the idea, um, you know, when a couple gets together, that's not our story because I robbed the cradle. Mm. But <laughs> I love I love the dynamic when, you know, the man is older than the woman. Mm -hmm. I, I, that's how I, like, my mom was younger than my dad, yeah. my grandmother younger than my grandfather. And I love that dynamic because I think, it gives them time to mature more. Mm. I believe... Okay. Let's, let's go start talking. <laughs> I believe women do mature faster... Yes. ...you I know, agree. than men. So if you guys are a little older, you got... Stop kicking me under the table. I didn't kick you. <laughs> <laughs> stop using that as an excuse to you stop. You did. It Keep kicked going. me. I'm not. So... Proximity. That but, was me. No. <laughs> what you trying to say? <laughs> anyway, but what's the story? How did you guys meet anyway? We know you guys. It's like the couple about town. Uh -huh. You know, you really made, you built a business for yourself. Mm -hmm. You built a legacy for mm -hmm. yourself and for yes. others. Well, how we met was he was stalking me and he just knew I was the one from the beginning. Let's tell a real story. Uh. <laughs> no, so I had a friend who was working with him at the time at, in, in his real estate company. And she said, you got to meet this guy, Jay Morrison. And I'm mm -hmm. like, the real estate guy? I'm like, I've seen him on Instagram. I said, I followed him, but I unfollowed him because he posts too much. I'm like, he's, <laughs> I'm like, he's a narcissist. He's full of himself. <laughs> and she was like, no, you have to meet him. She was like, you guys are so much alike, um, both rooted in the community. And uh, at the time, I was running a personal shopping company where I had 36 NFL players that mm -hmm. I was shopping for. And he, mm -hmm. she was like, you need to get some of your, real, your athletes involved with the real estate. 
So she set us up a meeting and I went to his office in Midtown. He had a little shoebox office in Midtown. Mm-hmm. Shoebox. Yeah. It was small. We all <laughs> yeah, we were at a little table just like it was this. Midtown, though. You got a picture? Yeah. I had a good address. Like, no, it was nice. It was like a high rise, but it was like a small little, he had the smallest package that you can get. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that foyer was nice, though. <laughs> <laughs> and so I came and sat down in the meeting at a table just like this and I never left. Mm. So what, he just compelled you. He did. Well, mm-hmm. I was, well, truthfully, was I was already compelled. <laughs> I was already compelled before I met him. I had eight months prior to me meeting him, he did an a interview on Fox Business mm-hmm. um, where he debated this gentleman on Fox and the guy asked him, does, uh, does U.S. government hate black people? And oh, that's the, one of your infamous yes. ones. Yes, and that, Jay, I've seen the that. way he broke this answer down, it was so cold and suave and poised but direct. I was like, oh, I like this guy. Yeah. So when I met him, I'm just like, oh, yeah. It was his intelligentsia. I'm him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he, um, I told him that I was a poet, which I think he already knew. Mm-hmm. And he asked me to come, mm, record show. <laughs> um, he asked me to come do poetry at his corner class. So he does this infamous thing called the corner class where he teaches real estate on the corners um, in the most yeah. underserved mm-hmm. yep. communities. Yep. And I came to his one of his first ones in Bankhead and I did two poems. And once I did those poems, mm. he was in love. So but, yeah, that, that, that's now part of her story. That's her, that's her story, right. that's his story. <laughs> so meeting happened, round table like this in a small uh-huh. conference room. Great energy. I thought she had great energy. Mm. She was dressed nice, all yeah. that. But I was in a relationship and I literally was like not looking at nothing. Mm. Okay. Like right, I came to Atlanta seven years ago and um, when I got here, I was single and, you know, dating, moving around. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yo, I can't do this. Like, I'm going to be in mm. trouble. Like, mm-hmm. I literally had to take myself off the market because I'm like, yo, I'm going to have more babies or like catch something. <laughs> like, it's going to be bad. Like, I, yeah. I, I love myself Single enough. Man yeah, in yeah, Atlanta. I, I love myself <laughs> enough to know myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, so, so I had a girlfriend at the time and um, she came into the office and I loved her energy and I thought it was great business energy, but I literally wasn't looking at anything like romantic, mm-hmm. physical, like nothing. It was like, okay, cool, she's cool. But she yeah, thought cool. she was landing on you. Okay. She, yeah, she thought she was. Yeah. No, so. it did, there was an energy in the meeting. Even the girl who introduced us, she was in the meeting with us. She was like, you guys could just not, it was the energy was crazy. It yeah. was definitely a synergy and a chemistry. Mm-hmm. Um, he wasn't flirting, but it was definitely like, oh, this guy's going to be around for a while. Uh-huh. We we're going to have either hard. a business yeah. relationship or something. We just, I knew that. Yeah, what I knew you, what What did you tell your friend when we went to the car after the meeting? I told my friend before I even got in my car in the in the parking lot. I said, oh, that's my husband. I said, I'm going to marry mm. him. I didn't even, I didn't you, know he was in a relationship. Knew. You knew. You I should... knew he was my husband. The, mm. That day, I'm like, oh, I called her and I said, that's my husband. I'm going to marry him. Nice. Literally. Now, okay. So this is, <laughs> like, she, 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 <laughs> this is her experience. Well, because we, we hear a lot of guy, you know, guys say, like Michael mm-hmm. say, he knew the first time that mm-hmm. I was his wife. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't know. Mm-hmm. I def. You know, we've been through this. You, I didn't know. You say you didn't I hear know, that, but you know, you, you always when say I look was back now. When something. I look back yeah. now, there was definitely a yeah. spark. <laughs> but did you feel the same thing she felt? Not then, no. So we went on a business lunch after that. It was cool. Mm-hmm. Not then. I was even talking to my guy. I was like, "Yeah, she's cool. Like she's like she's, yeah. pretty, she's cool, but wasn't like wasn't, you know." Mm-hmm. So then when I did my corner class in Bankhead, um, you know, I'm out there. I'm sweating. I'm teaching on the corners. Mm-hmm. Whole crowd out and. Young Malcolm Energy. And then um, she was reluctant to perform because she was like, I'm a paid poet. Like, I don't perform mm. on, for I'm like, free. I'm not coming to a little corner class in the hood and <laughs> performing for free. I'm, an, I'm a paid artist. Right. <laughs> and I didn't know what a corner class was. I'm like, what is a corner class? And I pulled up and I just never seen anything more beautiful. It was mm. hundreds of black people on a corner with notebooks and notepads, mm-hmm. like taking notes, just listening to him. And I'm yeah. like, what is this? Yeah. And God led me to perform. I performed two poems. Mm-hmm. Did she perform Dear Black Man? And um, Black Love. And Black Love. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so after she did those, I was like, oh, she the one one. Right? Yeah. yeah. So I, I love that story for a minute That's because dope. it wasn't about how tight her jeans were. It mm-hmm. wasn't about her smile, which is a beautiful Thank smile. You. And she's an attractive woman. It was about her intelligence, mm-hmm. her grace, her gift. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a wonderful thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So let me it was ask purpose. you this, though. It was a purpose alignment. She, Go ahead. Explain that. Explain the purpose alignment. It, it, so it was like, at that time, I was kind of on the outs of my relationship. And she was a, a great woman. She cooked. She was mm-hmm. attractive. All those things. But it was like, I was missing something. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I came here to Atlanta because God called me here. Like, I literally mm-hmm. got a voice and vision that said... Where did you live before? New Jersey. Okay. What? Yes. <laughs> you a Jersey boy, too? A Jersey boy. Uh, okay. Yes. Just, okay. okay. Jersey boy. How did so, I not know all of this? Okay. <laughs> So, um, literally, my, my, one of my first corner classes, it was actually my third corner class, was in Bankhead, before this one, before her. Mm-hmm. Uh, my first year okay. doing it, 
90 people came outside. People flew in from Seattle, Washington mm-hmm. to come to this corner wow. class. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm mind blown because yeah. mm-hmm. God gave me this vision to yeah. teach on the corner. And that mm-hmm. was like, okay, I'll do it. Mm-hmm. Right. And so um, a quick little story. So that day I was trying to get a rental car. I was trying to get an SUV. So I went to like five or the seven different uh, spots to get an SUV. Mm-hmm. There was no SUVs. Mm-hmm. And so as I'm going back to Atlanta airport, one of my online students from Jay Morrison Academy is like, hey, Jay, I'm one of your students. I work at Enterprise. I can get you a car. I'm like, you got mm-hmm. SUVs? He's like, no. I get you a drop top. Yeah. Like, all right, cool. So I get a convertible. Why that's important is because after my corner class, I dropped one of my partners off in uh, his hotel in Buckhead. We're in the convertible, tops down. And I'm like, yo, man, I think my movement will go well here in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Right? I'm talking to him in the car. And the moment, I swear to you, the moment I said the word movement, somebody from across the parking lot said, Jay Morrison, is that you? Respect your movement, bro. Mm. Okay. So my affirmation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Look at my man. You know what you got to do, right? I say, yeah, I got to come here. Yeah. I moved here a month later. Mm-hmm. Wow. Right? And so on that journey of purpose to repair our community, when I saw, uh, again, it's all kind of looks in Atlanta, right? It's mm-hmm. all kind of. Yep. All kind of. It's beautiful like a candy store. Yeah. 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 It, it is, right? It's not just beautiful, yeah. like self-employed, yep. got houses, all that, properties, houses. Mm-hmm. they have all their stuff, and a waistline. Yes. Yes. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All of that. Yeah. yeah. All of that. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, like, all that was there, but that I'd never um, been in the presence of or seen a woman that was, like, so powerful and, like, people were crying on the corner. Mm-hmm. I got chills. Mm-hmm. It mm-hmm. was just, like, and she was talking about black love and yeah. talking about black men. I'll, I'll speak greatness into you, and mm-hmm. right? And so I was, like, when you talk about a purpose partner and alignment and journey trajectory, I know that the calling that I know God had on my life, yeah. and I was, like, oh, that's the— you recognize complimentary her piece. Then. That, 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 that's that's, that's yeah. what I need to, to go do what I gotta do for our father. Yeah. So mm. you guys have been married five years now? It's gonna be five in July. Five, five in July. What what do you like about marriage and what don't you like about marriage? What I love about marriage is this. <laughs> yeah, get, what I love from about that. marriage is um, <laughs> you just have someone. You have a companion, you have mm-hmm. a partner, you have someone to come to at the end of the night, you have someone to share your life with, your thoughts with. You're, you're not alone. Mm. You're not alone in your emotions. You're not alone in your thoughts. You're not alone in your purpose. You're not alone in a in a direction. Um, I'm not going to say what I don't like about it. What I found challenging and what some, I still find challenging, but not as challenging as I did in the beginning was you have this idea for your life and mm-hmm. these goals and aspirations mm-hmm. for your life, your vision on where you want to go. Mm-hmm. But then you meet this other person who also has a vision for their life and their goals yes. and where they want to go. And you have to figure out how to intermingle these visions mm-hmm. and you have to really be comfortable with dying. There's parts of you, especially as a woman, ego. that have to die. Mm-hmm. Not even just the ego, your dreams, your aspirations, the, the plan that you had for your life, you ha- that has to die in order for you to align with a collective vision now that God has, that God has sought for you to have with this person. Mm. It, but, but, mm. Before you go, because I love, I love where you're going with this, so mm-hmm. let's, let's just go ahead and lean into it. So yeah. you, you said that you feel partially with marriage or just becoming one. Yes. Like when two become one, one, that you feel a part of you has to die. Absolutely. And I want to catch this mm-hmm. and, because there are going to be some people saying, so what are you saying? Like, mm-hmm. you can't live your dreams because mm-hmm. you're supporting his dreams. Mm-hmm. I, I I can tell you, we've been together 18 years, mm-hmm. married Congrats. for 12 yeah. years. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. But I've died many times. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There was the death of ego. Mm-hmm. There was the death of I yes. for us yes. as well. Often... I had a dream, but that dream didn't coincide with keeping us together. Yeah. You know, or he had a dream or a vision or even a business. And I I had to put what I wanted on the back burner mm-hmm. to yeah. support him because marriage really is mm-hmm. a compromise. Yes. And, you know, there are going to be times where one, you got to support and some mm-hmm. the other person has to take an L. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and, sometimes, and, and vice versa. Yeah. But that's. That's how you last 18 years. So yeah. I get entirely. I mm-hmm. just didn't want y'all to be all up in the comments. But you know what? <laughs> one important one mm-hmm. that you had stated to mm-hmm. me before that you had, you know, an awakening. And one of the things or people that had died was actually Egypt. Mm-hmm. And a new Egypt was reborn, mm-hmm. meaning she was living within, you know, all of this fame and the cameras and so on and so on. And Because yeah. there were plenty of times where I'm like, you ain't going to talk to me like that or you ain't going to treat me like that. And you ain't. It's because she was so used to doing it on our own and yeah. everything, being the boss and so on and so on. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. So, Not because she I realized, wanted to. No, I know, yeah. but she realized that I can't be Egypt mm-hmm. all the time, yeah. right? Yeah. I need to learn to turn that off. And yeah. mm-hmm. you can elaborate on it if you want to, but when you had mentioned that to me, I thought it was profound. No, you know? I, I, yeah. I've struggled with the same things and, it, and, and it's a journey. You know, you go from being Ernestine Johnson 
to Ernestine Morrison. Mm. Ernestine Johnson was a viral poet that was book busy and blessed, speaking, mm. flying here, doing movies, doing shows, mm -hmm. had her own brand and businesses and, mm -hmm. and clients. And then you're Ernestine Morrison. You have to discover who this Ernestine Morrison is and parts of Ernestine Johnson, including ego and attitude and mm -hmm. desires and some of those things have to die in mm -hmm. order for you to walk mm -hmm. into who God is calling Ernestine Morrison to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Y'all love that, don't you? What was yeah. the lean? What was the leaning to me about? What was there? Oh, I mean, we, we've got through it. Yeah. yeah. That, it was a, a mirror yeah. circumstance gotcha. where it was just, you ain't going to tell... You know, I'm Jay. Look, <laughs> what? Don't go talk to me like that. Who? Me? Yeah. Like, bro, yeah. you done lost your rabbit mind. Like, yo, I don't care who you thought you. Like, no, nah, I'm him. Like, yo. I don't care what poet. What poet. <laughs> we learned, we've learned like, there's a title for that. Lamont and Kelly. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, called yeah, yeah. Watch Your Damn Tone. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, was, so, with two strong personalities, mm -hmm. two driven people, mm -hmm. two creative, two extremely well off folks, yeah. what do you do? to make it last. Yeah. What did you do constantly when you're pouring so much to make business. sure it yeah. stays together? I, okay. Okay. Can, I, can I rewind real quick? Yeah, because yeah, okay. you, you didn't get to say what you like mm -hmm. and what you did like. Yes, I was, I was oh, waiting. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't leave me out. <laughs> okay. But I want to get to that too. Yeah. Um, but no, what, what, I, what I really appreciate about marriage uh, and part of my motivation for getting married is that legacy piece. We throw mm -hmm. legacy around mm -hmm, very frivolously, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, it's creating a family. Yeah. Right. So yeah. like, so like, uh, I was a teenage dad. I, I was actually in prison in, in New York. My mm -hmm. daughter was born. Okay. She's 24 now. Okay. She graduated from the top colleges in the country. Washed you in St. Louis. She lives in New York. She mm -hmm. works at Chanel. She's a model actress. Doing it. Doing it. Was president of her sorority. All that. Mm -hmm. Um, which is what we went back to that TikTok thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, she grew up around all that, but was raised with principles, so I could trust her mm -hmm. in the world. And she's had things where she did stuff in college where it was like, bruh, mm -hmm. like. Yeah. You know, so yeah. you're going to have yeah. those moments, yeah. but she could always kind of autocorrect and come back to a, a better path. Mm -hmm. And I have a 14-year-old as well mm -hmm. um, in high school and then our, our two-year-old Kobe. So um, part of what I love about it, though, is as opposed to being like this single guy or dating, we don't have a commitment to somebody and just procreating kids. Mm -hmm. And well, I hate the term baby mama and all that, but, you know, creating that normal yeah. cultural kind of family, um, it feels good to have family family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Huxtable family. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, real, like, this truly is my legacy. We ain't got to yeah. argue about, can she get my last name or not my last name mm -hmm. or all that. Like, I know that I'm intentionally creating heirs that I can pass down our wealth to and, and we're really working towards. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even like from uh, as a black man, um, someone who grew up in poverty, like I always say this when it comes like the outside of businesses and real estate and other assets, I feel so proud and just accomplished that we got a multi-million dollar life insurance policy. Mm. Like, I know when I yes. go, she got M's. She's good. My, yeah. my daughter's right. got M's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to yeah. go one day. Yeah. Right? And yeah. especially as someone who's a, a very uh, active activist mm -hmm. in this country mm -hmm. and all that, right? She, uh, she uh, we had an incident one time at the house where she didn't know that um, I was home already because I went to like a, kind of a back garage and she didn't know I was home. So she didn't see my car. But the, uh, she saw somebody on the camera mm -hmm. with a hoodie on. I had a hoodie on that day. So <laughs> she literally, I was sitting on the porch watching her in the car. On, I was listening to her on speakerphone. She's in her car talking in front of the houses, uh -huh. right? And I heard her call me. And before I could answer, she had pulled off. You know, my, I think my phone had died or something like that. But anyway, long story short, she thought that somebody had came to the house and had got me. Mm. So she had already kind of a story in her head. Within that, 17 seconds, I'm like, his car's not out front. He, he was next to me on the freeway. He's not here. I see this random person in a hoodie on her back camera. I'm out. But I, she already had made a story like, they got Jay. Like, he already, like, <laughs> I literally, in my head, I was like, I'm going to tell Kobe this. I'm going like, to tell Kobe. Like, I thought and she made a lifetime movie out of it. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> in 17 seconds, made a whole lifetime yeah. movie out of it. I'm like, bro, you didn't even give me a fighting chance. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> but, but again, just, just saying that the, the principles are just family. Yeah. And just like that level of yeah. love mm -hmm. and talking about like, you know, our future and our legacy, intentionally creating a legacy. Mm -hmm. So that's what I love about it. Um, I think the challenges, um, you know, and also I'll say the challenges I love because the fire of marriage has made me a better man. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, yeah. So even those times oh, yeah. where it was like, you know, we talked about this openly on podcasts where we were like mm -hmm. almost on the outs at one point because of so much just pressure of outside mm -hmm. energy and just what mm -hmm. we're, things we were going through. Mm -hmm. And um, I had to reflect on myself and, and, and really say, okay, before you can blame her for her attitude, ego, tone and all that stuff. 
are you being the best husband you can be? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, 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 yep. how are, and how are you um, nurturing the environment? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so it really made me double back and have self-accountability to really make sure, like, okay, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be the best husband I could be. So she acting up, it's all on her. <laughs> it's all on her. It's all on her. And he did. There he did. Go. He literally was like, I saw a complete shift. He was being the best person he could be. Yeah. You, and she and said, what about you? And she stepped up. I stepped up. Okay. Yeah, I had to. Yeah. It forced you to. But there's going to be other times, like, we'll, we'll mm-hmm. tell you. Oh, yeah. We've had a lot of those crossroads. Well, we've had spats since then. Yeah. It's like, going to be a lot of them. I feel like marriage is a roller coaster. Yeah. Oh, it is. You're going up and you're up it and is. you feel great. And yeah. then there's times you're going down and this is the scariest mm-hmm. thing in mm-hmm. life. And then there's times you're just coasting. And then mm-hmm. there's a loop and you're like, whoa, this mm-hmm. is fun. I think it's just the scariest, yeah. most beautiful roller coaster in the world is marriage. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. I, I actually look forward to, this is going to sound twisted, but let me explain myself. <laughs> I look forward to the times when we butt heads, Mm -hmm. when we do fight, because it challenges us to stretch ourselves Mm -hmm. even more and to figure out a better way to communicate Mm -hmm. so that we can get back. But every time we fight or we have like a big... And when we fight, we fight, y'all. That means I'm going to have to go get me some helmets then because we button heads like this. (laughs) Listen. (laughs) Like, like, remember that we... What was it, last year, the year before last year? We fought... He ran out the house. He took off running all the way down the street. You always tell this story. You be elaborating so down much. The street. Jeez, Mike, Christ. come back and deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> and the neighbors are opening the door like, oh, God, it's the black people. So <laughs> Hilarious. See, this so, one won't get theatrical. I will. He, he doesn't get theatrical at all. He's like, all right. No, because I, but I believe in like bringing it all to the table. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Don't hold anything back. If we're gonna fight, let's fight. Yeah. Not physically, <laughs> but like let, it's the Scorpio. Right, right. right. But like let's bring it all out yeah. so we can really deal with it, yeah. and mm-hmm. it's nothing left. You know, and then we can start over. Mm-hmm. So in our marriage, we've had to reintroduce ourselves mm-hmm. yes. multiple constantly. times. I think you're gonna always constantly, constantly be always. reintroducing yourselves. And I think if anyone tells you anything different, they're lying. Mm-hmm. So, you know, totally. I, I protect us and myself from my Scorpio. Mm. I know where I can go, mm-hmm. so I just yeah, I just won't even go because if yeah. I go there, it's like nobody's gonna like it. I know the feeling. That's <laughs> why I'm so calm. You know, out of us with, with Yang and Yang, I'm extremely calm because I know I have to yes, be. This one. Like I don't want to get upset because I'm the guy that's waiting in the bushes for you. you know what I'm <laughs> so I don't ever want to go As there. Our HGTV so HGTV fans, HGTV fans are like, really? No, I want to cut your hedges <laughs> and stuff. You know, because I'm, you know, I do landscaping. Like right, chill. You feel me? Oh, I, I would have. Need your lawn mowed? I'm here. Right. But no, so I'm. I, I, I stay calm. Like. Again, mm-hmm. because I live on, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. If I can't change it, why stress it? If I can change it, why stress it? Mm-hmm. And that's really how I live. Unless you hit me or you disrespect the family, that's the only time you will ever see the true thing come up. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? But otherwise than that, true. don't need it. But, okay, so you you guys, you've had some incredible successes, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. But you've also had a lot of pressure, as you just acknowledged, yeah. um, on your relationship, very public pressures. Yes. First, let's establish what you were able to do. Mm-hmm. You were able to bring the Legacy Center mm-hmm. to Atlanta. For those mm-hmm. who don't know, yes. please let them know what the Legacy Center is. Yes, thank you. Well, the, first and foremost, um, the Legacy Center is owned by the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. Mm-hmm. So we launched the Tulsa Real Estate Fund, which is our real estate fund. Um, um, rooted in the spirit of Black Wall Street, Tulsa, mm-hmm. Oklahoma, mm-hmm. that Jay had this seed planted in him very years ago, and, and God saw fit that I helped him saw this vision through, and mm-hmm. we launched the Tulsa Real Estate Fund and raised $5 million our mm-hmm. first 24 hours, um, just over $11 mil- <laughs> just over $11 million um, in its totality. And our first, the goal was to purchase real estate assets across the country. Mm-hmm. Our first asset was the Legacy Center, mm-hmm. yeah. which is a community center um, event space and production space right here in East Point, Georgia. Mm. 30,000 square foot building. The building's painted black. They got the White House. We got the Black mm-hmm. House. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're super proud of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Here it is. Pop, 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 pop the shoulder. Yeah. Not the collar. Pop the shoulder. But, oh, I thought you were telling her to pop her shoulder. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Pop, yo. I'm like, fix yourself. He's like, fix yourself, babe. No, no we, we, don't, we don't really like... Um, we don't personally boast around it. Um, but I think as a community, we, we really should. Yeah. When you look at yep. it, we brought together 15,000 families from mm-hmm. 22 countries mm-hmm. and raised over 11 and a half million. Mm-hmm. And with that, have been able to deploy 9.4 million into uh, investments. Mm-hmm. We've been able to invest a million dollars into transparency mm-hmm. so people can see that it's all above mm-hmm. board and uh, there's been zero corruption. Mm-hmm. We've gotten through all kinds of vetting and testing mm-hmm. and everything mm-hmm. else. And been able to uh, fund uh, over 12 minority developers mm-hmm. uh, with our developments, resurrect mm-hmm. the Black House. We've been able to produce 150 uh, units of quality and attainable mm-hmm. housing mm-hmm. throughout the community, create yeah. over 200 jobs, 
uh, launched Big Brother Anonymous, a mentorship program mm-hmm. from the Legacy Center. Mm-hmm. It's partnered with the Obama Foundation. Dope. Mm-hmm. Um, Dope. And all these different milestones. But um, I just want to say, uh, as the first Black-owned real estate crowdfunding in the country, we also represent the greatest act of group economics in mm-hmm. our community mm-hmm. since Marcus Garvey and the UNIA in 1919. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. Like it's the, major. Out of all the political leaders, entertainment leaders, mm-hmm. real estate leaders, business leaders, mm-hmm anyone, yeah. our company was able to, again, put together the greatest collection and unification mm-hmm. of mostly black families and our allies mm-hmm. uh, who came together and put our, our money where our mouth was, not in donations, mm-hmm. but in actual, everyone had ownership and equity in the company. Yes. yes. But uh, that scares big, people. Big. It does. That scares people and it opens the door for a lot of scrutiny, but... Yes. <laughs> right? So, so let, let's go there for a minute, right? Mm-hmm. You guys then, after... Really, I mean, what you did was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And everybody's riding what your doing. coattails. Mm-hmm. What they're doing. Right. And and everybody's riding your coattails. And then, dun, 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 yep. the FBI, yep. the FCC yep. comes knocking. Mm-hmm. And we all know bad news travels farther faster and, and faster, faster. Mm-hmm. than the good mm-hmm. news. Yes. Because you you came under scrutiny. You There was an investigation. And they were vindicated. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yep. They yes. wouldn't be sitting here if they weren't. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But but what was life like for you? What happened in those moments? Ooh. <laughs> well, it like, so first we um, raised several million, right? Our first 48 hours. And we're like, mind you, I thought of this idea in 2015. Mm-hmm. Formed a company in 2016. Mm-hmm. Walked it down and launched June 1st on the anniversary of Black Wall Street bombing of 2018. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm literally watching this vision I got in my head after the Freddie Gray uprising Mm -hmm. of a solution for our community. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what? The website crashed twice at the same Mm -hmm. night. I mean, it was an Mm influx of support. And I'm like, yo, we did it. Yeah. And I always expected some kind of attacks, right? Mm -hmm. Because we know history. Mm -hmm. But I thought it would be like white nationalist or like some other kind of something. But what happened was like our first week, it was like a a slew of black Mm. anti-treff folks. Like our first attacks weren't the FBI or SEC. It was was black folks. It was black Mm. people. They were like, y'all crazy. It's a Ponzi scheme. This is a a scam. This is a Right, and so... Why? Not to mention, too, the optics, too. So what I didn't even realize was the optics of this. So we launched, let's say we launched on a Monday. I don't know. We launched on a Monday, right? Mm -hmm. Right? So it's allowed on social media. I think the very next... Thursday, which is maybe four days later, we were in Cabo, Mexico for my friend's wedding. Mm-hmm. They took the money and went to Mexico. Look yeah. at them living lavish. I'm like, yeah. if anyone's actually smart, you know you have to pay for a wedding and RSVP exactly. months <laughs> prior. Exactly. You know what I mean? And then, so we launched in June. We got married July. I had my dream <laughs> wedding. I'm not going to lie. I had my dream wedding. Thank you, babe, for my wedding. Yeah. They took the money and they look at their wedding. It's I'm like, this wedding was paid for eight months ago, yeah. ma'am. Yeah. So it's like, We've been getting money. Uh, <laughs> We've been right, getting money, right, right? Right, And so it's just like, we just got attack after attack after attack the first mm-hmm. week. Mm-hmm. Just like, oh, she got a new Chanel bag. Must be with the Tulsa Real Estate Fund yeah. money. It's like, oh it, my goodness. So so all this swell of noise, mm-hmm. new YouTube channels created, like yes. new like podcasts were just dedicated to us. <gasps> it, was, it was so weird. I was like, almost like, I was hurt really. Because mm. mm-hmm. I'm like, one... We were already doing, both doing well and didn't right. have to do this. Right. That's why no one has done this because no one wants the reputational mm-hmm. exposure, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. So it was like, we actually stepped up to the plate. We looked around and said, well, who's actually creating something for us to practice group economics? Mm-hmm. 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 I can blame LeBron and blame Oprah and Jay-Z. Why didn't you do it and all that? And we mm-hmm. can play that game. Right. Or you can do it yourself. Right. 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 Mm-hmm. So I thought that was a noble thing. <laughs> yes, yes. But um, so we went through those attacks. And I think a lot of that noise then led to six months later. So we, we launched in June. By January, we're living in Sandy Spring. I won't say springs, but she gets on me about the S. It's Sandy, Sandy Springs. Sandy it is Sandy Springs. It is springs. Oh, yes. It is springs. Oh, maybe because I say Nordstrom's. Uh, she gets, uh, she, she gets no, mad. He just always adds random messes on things for no reason. But yes, it's Sandy Springs. It's a Jersey thing. But anyway. <laughs> so, all right, Sandy Springs. Mm-hmm. So, um, uh, we're looking at our, our home camera, and it's literally like, I think I was at home. You were home. Yeah, I was I was home by myself mm-hmm. in my bathrobe, just got out of the shower, and I get a knock at the door, like a heavy pound. It's like FBI. Mm. I'm thinking it's somebody playing a joke. I'm like, who is this? What are y'all doing? I open, and it's really the FBI. They got the, wow. the, the, the jacket on with the, like what you see in the yeah, movies. Yeah. I'm like, And they like, what, ran in your house? No, 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 no. They served with a, a, a subpoena. subpoena. Okay. And I'm like, what? I'm opening the subpoena, and it's like, Tulsa Real Estate Fund being subpoenaed. And I'm like, oh, this is real. Wow. So they asked for all of our laptops, all of our iPads, phones, tax bank records. Statements, bank tax statements, tax records, personal and business. Not just us, but our entire team. So our entire team, 
mm. had to download all of our phones, iPads, records, everything. Jeez. And that was FBI. And then but three days later, cause? SEC. But wait, before we get to the FCC. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, one would think that they have to have no. cars and no. that they have to have a... They nope. can just... One FBI can come to your house <laughs> yes. at any time. What is it? Yes. A certain amount Even of people you've have done to complain? Nothing. No, there was no... no com- there they don't was, even have to tell you why. They don't even have to tell you mm. why. If I show you the subpoena, the subpoena doesn't say like, oh, we have suspicion of anything. It doesn't say yeah, it's no alleged of anything. It's just... We want to see your. Oh, we have the right to look. But could mm. you have? Would you have had the right to say no? no I don't no. think so. No. no. When the FBI mm-hmm. subpoenas you, no, you have it. to. Yeah. But see, that sounds that sounds a little bit deeper than somebody even complained. That sounds like they didn't want you to win anyway. Well, even if have, nothing was wrong, you probably would have got I that. I think subpoena. you have this three-time felon who dropped out of high school. Who's that too. Super loud on social media. Who just yeah. raised eleven million dollars. Who's a three-time felon? This man right here. You oh, I'm high three times. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't know if you have this high school dropout who we who we don't know him and he just raised eleven million dollars. Let's probe into him and see right. what he got going All on. Right. How did gotcha. he do this? Exactly. We don't know him. So that yeah. was the FBI. Yes. yes. So now that's done. Mm-hmm. They yes. did their investigation yep. and they that was were eighteen fine. months. Eighteen months of investigating, Ooh. reading over fifty thousand emails, cell phones, iPads, bank statements, and nothing personal and nothing simultaneous with the SEC investigating. So they're investigating together. So FBI covers anything criminal and. SEC covers anything civil, civil. or misrepresentations mm-hmm. or yeah. right any kind of uh, malice there. So when you said, how did you feel? I'm like, oh, they're going to get me. And they're going to find a way <laughs> right. to get me. They're going to find a way to get me. And, 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 and then everybody's yeah. going to be like, see, we told you so. Right. right. Because right. imagine if they would have even gave me a $5,000 or us a $5,000 fine mm-hmm. or 10 days in jail or just yeah. Yeah. anything. 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 It'd because be hard you missed, it'd be because hard you missed for you guys to sit down with us, right? right. Uh, like Jay, we're like Ernestine, yeah. but they got that thing, right? And so I was like, they're going to just literally... Undercut our reputation, mm-hmm. and you know, mm-hmm. so I was just like, "All right, I'm uh, I've been here before, yeah. so I'm already planning my go away plan." Like, right. like they go. <laughs> <laughs> what is a go away plan? <laughs> I mean, because I think in Jay's mind, he's he's thinking they're going to find something, they're going mm-hmm. to put something here just to make it seem. And so, going through 18 months of being duly investigated was definitely strenuous. Because I'm like, yo, this is a black man in America who raised mm-hmm. 11 million. They're gonna fi- they're gonna find. Oh well, y'all didn't label this right, or y'all right, didn't do this right. right, and they're gonna find something. But yeah. when I tell you, not even a slap on the wrist, mm-hmm. not no not findings, a fi- no findings. And then the same. So, then our community, the same community, says, so what? They're still scamming. Just because Just the because. idea that they're investigating. So yeah. um, mm. again. One of the reasons we wanted to have you guys mm-hmm. on is we recognize also our influence. We mm-hmm. recognize our reach. And mm-hmm. we realize that bad news travels yeah. really fast and far, as mm-hmm. we mentioned. But the good news, you, you often you don't never hear. About hear. It. You don't yeah. hear when it's people like, have been cleared. Right. You don't hear right. that stuff. And so this was an opportunity Thank you to so much. say, look, they're doing something really good. And, mm-hmm. you know, people need to know it. Yeah. They need to know you've been cleared. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know what I mean? They wouldn't trust me. They wouldn't be on here right now to talk about the FBI <laughs> and SEC didn't find anything yeah. if they didn't find anything. And you yeah. so, know, anyone could find it online. Mm-hmm. Right. Go to, go to sec.gov. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You can search and look at yourself. Mm-hmm. That's just that. Mm-hmm. So, and that's also an uh, overall mentality thing to where us as black people feel like we don't deserve anything for free or we don't deserve to be able to do something or we don't believe they're actually giving back to us. They're right. doing it for Has to us. Be something. There's Has an to agenda. Be What's the agenda? Yeah. And that, I mean, that goes further back to how we were intentionally Programs. trained mm-hmm. and programmed Programs. to be mm-hmm. that way, to be against each other in any kind of way. Yeah. And then any bad apple that does do anything wrong, all of a sudden, all of us do wrong. Confirms that, you right? You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. It, it, it's unfortunate, but I'm glad. Did they even give you an apology? Anything? Of course not. No, no. of course not. And, and no. then and then we can't go like we so we we put like one post out and then took it down because our attorneys is like take that down. Mm. Like you don't want to spike the football, mm. right? So you don't want to announce like, hey, we won. You, know, right? yeah. you don't want to do that. And yeah. then, okay, okay. they're gonna come back and say, yeah. oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. really? So it was like you just kind of so so it was so loud when we were went through the uh, investigation mm-hmm. or what we call vetting or examinations. Um, but then when we were cleared, essentially, or no findings... We couldn't be as loud. We, we couldn't, couldn't be as loud because you don't mm. want to, like, throw it in their face that, aha, y'all didn't find nothing, right? Sure. So you you just kind of just go away. Sure. And, but so so all this, we, you have to remember, too, like, we dealt with this as humans. Yeah. As a, as a newly married couple, like, mm-hmm. our first year in, she's like, oh, this is what I get coming with you? Like, this... this were you <laughs> pregnant during this? No, not during okay. this time. But, you know, we met in March and were engaged by October. So... We got engaged in seven months and then married a year later. Mm-hmm. So this is still the beginning stages for me. So I'm like, well, what is happening here? Because we 
I was going to ask you that. <laughs> did, did at any point in your mind did anything go to you being with your past? Did mm-hmm. you ever go there? Like, and is this something coming up? I would be past? lying if I said I didn't. Okay. Absolutely, mm-hmm. I would be lying. So where my mind went was like current day. As this was happening, I'm mm-hmm. like, I know everything. My 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 name is on all the bank accounts. I see everything. I see where where stuff is going. I see where the money is. I, so I'm like, well, there's definitely nothing going on. But in my mind, I'm like, well, I don't know what he did in his past. Right. I don't know. I didn't. I'm like, I I've known you seven months. Mm. Who knows? So yeah, those things definitely go through your mind. And me, I, I he jokes. We joke about this all the time. I am a very straight and narrow person. Like yeah. I didn't come from the hood. I don't follow mm-hmm. the hood codes. Mm-hmm. If you're doing something crazy, I'm snitching. Let you know right now. <laughs> I am <laughs> not. That I is, love you, but I'm I love snitching. you, but that is a hood code, and I'm not hood. <laughs> so it. let's get that clear. Hashtag, hashtag, I love you, but I'm snitching. <laughs> right. Love you, but if I if I ain't had nothing to do with it, but please be clear. I I am not going I down with you. I love you, but if you did something right, yes. I'm gonna be the first. <laughs> <laughs> be the first my whole hood right now shaking. Yeah, like Jay. I am not the hundred. Jay, I thought you had a real one. <laughs> she a so, different kind of real one. I'm not the truth, though. I'm no, not I am the truth. a truthful. I am a truthful person. We we talked about this last night because he's like, you know, you're the type to like, you're not gonna rock with the crew just because. I'm like, mm-hmm. there's. I'm like, I can rock with the crew, but I can still disagree with the crew. So yes. just because we rock doesn't mean I have to agree with you. And I will be very vocal when I disagree. I do it with mm-hmm. my friends all the time. I'm like, mm, yeah, no, I think that was wrong. Mm-hmm. We can still be friends. I don't have to agree exactly. with you because we're friends or because we're married. Like, I'm just, I stand on the truth. So yeah. the truth mm-hmm. is the truth. I'm like that too. Like, I'll tell one of my brothers, I'll tell you privately, hey, Mike, man, you shouldn't have did like right, that. Right, right, but right, right. You my man. Yeah. When you write, you write. Right. And when you wrong, you write. Right, 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 right. That's just, right. that's a correct code, bro. In public. Behind the scenes. What about bro, you? Is it public or anytime you stand on well, the Well, I actually had to learn this the hard way because I was actually with my girlfriends um, last year. We were we were at a dinner and um, two of my girlfriends were talking about something they went through publicly. And I was like, yeah, I kind of agree with the public. Mm-hmm. And what I said wasn't wrong, but they they then cur- told me later, like, you know, we respect how you feel, but I, w- I wish you would have said that when we weren't at dinner in front of everyone. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, I see that. Mm-hmm. But I just thought we were having an open dialogue about it. But yes, yeah. but I stand with the truth. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> so, I'm snitching. So to answer, your, to answer your question, yes, I as, as the pressure got heavier and heavier, I started having doubts like what... Let me make sure I just know everything. Because yeah. again, this is a new world for me. I'm an actress. This finance world is not my world. So I'm mm-hmm. like, let me just make sure I know and see it with my own eyes. Okay, yep. This looks good. This checks out. This checks out. Okay. Mm-hmm. I feel better knowing that my own eyes were on things. Yes. How, how do you how do you then renew yourselves as a couple after mm-hmm. something like that? Mm-hmm. And even having doubts within your marriage. Yes. You know, I could imagine that that's disappointing for you. If mm. she even comes and says, babe, are you sure you didn't? Yeah. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Am I sure? Right. I'm sure. Like, how, how do you renew and restore? Oh. Well, it's been a humbling experience. And let me also yeah. say for, for your audience, maybe new to my, to mm. my brand, um, mm-hmm. I was a three-time felon by 21 years old. Mm-hmm. Um, and turned my life around at 25 years old when I got into real estate, to mortgages. And I've never had a, you know... Um, a charge since. So for me, it was like, I didn't leave the streets to get into more crime. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, I, I put that behind me because I saw the potential of my life. Yeah. And saw that I was more than a drug dealer. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't, I didn't stop being a drug dealer to become a scammer. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, that, <laughs> it's like I could have just kept selling crack if I was going to. Right. right. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> what I'm saying? Like, yo, when I turned my life around and I, and I, and I, and I followed my, my calling and my, my purpose, like, it was, it was genuine. And so our, our entire fun, our effort is it's not perfect, but the mm-hmm. mistakes we've made and everything, but it's all a genuine effort to serve right. our mission and serve our people. And right. so um, I stand on that. Mm-hmm. And within our family, um, it's it's been... Um, it's been a journey. <laughs> it's been a journey. It's been mm-hmm. a trial. It's been like, you say, like, how do you bounce back from that? Uh, I think all this is part of the process. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's really like we went through two years of what I call... Um, my and our Joe period, mm-hmm. where it wasn't just the investigations or the smear campaigns, but it was that. And then uh, my wife was pregnant at the time. I ended up having an emergency surgery for di- diverticulitis at a hole in my intestine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I was down. And then it was like a maniac online who was like making the most noise and just like instigating and mm-hmm. just like really trying to rile people up. And um, then our daughter was born and had uh, five brain surgeries and wow. two hernia surgeries and all of this in five years of marriage. Yeah, this was all this, in a two-year period. This is all in a two-year period. Okay, right. So she's going through a postpartum depression and and all kind of stuff. And then like, I feel like I'm not protecting the family. Mm-hmm. And right, it's, it's all in your window. It was and a smorgasbord of just. It was just. It was Ooh. everything. It was just. It yeah. was weight. But um, really, 
it brought us so much closer to God. It made mm-hmm. us more grounded. It made yeah. us like really check ourselves and um, really it was, it was a pruning, just, really it was a pruning. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So and and really just to expound on, I don't think we ever bounced back. I think mm. we bounced forward, right? So oh, like there's right. a new, there there's go. a newness. There's a, there was a pruning, there was a shedding. Mm-hmm. There was a humbling that like um, our, our, our marriage coach, Bo, he, he always gives us this example of like when there's a block of wood and the, and the artist is trying to make the block of wood a ma- into a masterpiece. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. being hammered and chucked at and mm-hmm. ripped apart. And, and then, and then there's this masterpiece. And I feel like that's what we went through. We went mm. through the ax, axing mm-hmm. at us and chopping at us and the hammers and the nails. And now I feel like there's a masterpiece here or the, or the beginning of a masterpiece at least so we never went back mm-hmm. it was a new thing that was birthed mm-hmm. pressure mm-hmm. bursts pipes but yeah. also reveals mm-hmm. Diamonds. Yes. yes, they do. Right? You know, it's yes. never enough time. Mm. Uh, but this this wow. has been such a thorough <laughs> conversation and understanding. I'm inspired yes. by just Thank what you. by your journey. Mm-hmm. You know that you persevered even through it. Yes, and that. You know, what's beautiful is sometimes the devil thinks he can stop the mission. Mm-hmm. You know, throw all that was thrown at you guys. Yeah. It was weight. It was weight. I, can, I'm, I'm feel, I feel heavy yeah. listening to it, yeah. you know. Um, I also feel empathy mm-hmm. because anything that's worth doing is worth going through. We're going to be yeah. tested. Yes. Yeah. You know, y'all went through the hellfire yeah. and you're, you're coming out on the other side. And so now you know for sure your mission cannot be mm-hmm. you know, right. yes. distracted. Yes. And that's the exciting that's a, part about it. It's like, oh, y'all do like, you know, talking about the enemy, not people. Cause I, we realize it's not a it's not a physical mm-hmm. attack. It's a mm-hmm. spiritual attack. Yes. It is oh, a spiritual attack. So it's like, oh, the enemy, oh, you threw everything at us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, threw, yeah. you threw health, you threw mm-hmm. reputation, you threw money, finance. Yeah. I mean, we lost, we lost several million dollars yeah. during this during this, this yep. whole thing. Yeah. But it's like, uh, Okay, but we still here. Right. Yeah. We, That's right. how I know a breakthrough is coming. Mm-hmm. Whenever I feel like everything's coming at me, including yeah. the well, you know we're in construction, so including the kitchen sink sometimes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a breakthrough is coming, yeah. right? Yep. Even babe, when when we were at the very beginning of um, you know, doing our show, mm-hmm. married to real estate, it just felt like everything yeah. was coming at us. We, you know. In our business, in our family, mm-hmm. people were coming out the woodwork, and yeah. you know. I mean, it, but see, it still is though, because yeah. we're New a levels. positive black family on TV, mm-hmm. doing things that the typical black family that is portrayed through the media isn't doing, right? Yeah. So there's always, let's find something. To something. Let's yeah, see let's what we've done. Something. But you know there's I mean? nothing. <laughs> Keep looking. Anyway, there's nothing. Dragon. Try and, and, and we're going to dirty ourselves before anybody you know knows what I mean? Yeah, because so, we're, we're transparent. And yeah. I think that's the beautiful thing. That You know what? That yes. brings us full circle because I know I talk social media early, but that is the beautiful thing about social media. Mm, yeah. It allows us some power back in our hands so we voice. can be transparent and yeah. have a voice of mm-hmm. and, and be able to control yeah. our own narrative. Yeah. Yes. Right. yeah. Let the people know where they can find you. Yes, you can find me on Instagram at Mrs. Ernestine Morrison on my website, ErnestineMorrison.com. And mm-hmm. if you are an artist, actor, producer, writer, director, um, follow Greenlit ATL. It is my creative community. It's the number one community here in Atlanta for all things creative. Oh, yep. And you can check me out on all social platforms: uh, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram at Mr. J Morrison, okay. Mr. J Morrison mm-hmm. And check out our fun. We're launching a new one soon, so we're, okay. we're, we are doubling down mm-hmm. on all this uh, uh, investment. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tulsa Real Estate Fund.com, and check us out a free tour at the Legacy Center, LegacyCenter.com. Yes. Uh, so check out our initiatives there. Yes. All right, we don't, usually don't. leave with one to go on and one to grow on. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna okay. let y'all do it. I'll give you one from uh, we watching some word last night from one of our spiritual. Uh, Mentors, if you will, Prophet Lovey. Mm. He said, um, he said, you can't be a topic. Is what we say? No, he hey. said you can't be on top unless you are a topic. Mm. Mm. Yeah, you can't make it on top. You can't be on top unless you're a topic. Mm. I like and- I say, say my name, say what you want, <laughs> spell it right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just spell it right. <laughs> and, he, and he also said, um, he said, the people that are talking about you, the people that are hating on you, they're just making you famous. Mm-hmm. Mm. This is true. The Where I'm at right now in the season of life is just like, accept change. Things are ever changing. Like, mm-hmm. you have a plan and and be committed to that plan, but also be accepting that that plan can change and it can change again and it can change again. And wherever you land, it was all intentional and mm-hmm. it was all working for your good. Mm-hmm. Even the things that you thought weren't working for you, it's all working for you. And that's where I'm at right now yeah. in mm-hmm. life. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Thanks for coming. Yes, thank Ernestine you for having me. And Jay yes. Morrison, and this is the Marriage and Money Podcast, guys. You your subscribe mic. <laughs> and uh-huh. make sure you turn those notifications on. And tell your friends. And don't forget to check out. Married to Real Estate on HGTV. Yes. All right, love you. Bye.